A small town in the middle of the country has 10 citizens, and we know their incomes in 2007. Let's compute the Gini interval. First, we copy the information here, and we sort it from um, this, from the, uh, the smaller, smallest to the highest value. We see that we have one person in every category, but uh, we're, we're, this represents clearly just 10 people. We now compute the cumulative uh, absolute frequencies and subsequently the relative absolute frequencies. This means that, for instance, 40% of people are included in the first four rows. Next, we, what we see is how much amount of money we have in this group of people. Well, we take into consideration that, for instance, in this row, we could have two persons per family, $8,000 each. Well, we know that out of these people, 10 people, we, they earn 124000 Well, we accumulate this cipher, okay, this is not very complicated to do, we, we see that the result is the same, and we compute the relative measure for every number. Clearly, we see that, for instance, 10% of people is just having uh, 1% or 40% of people is having 16%. What's the difference then? The difference is 10% minus 1.6%. It represents an inequality of 8%. We compute the inequality for the n minus 1 rows, okay, and we compare that against the distribution of population. This is what the Gini index, the way we, we are going to compute the Gini index. So this is the sum for this block divided by the sum of this other block. If we do this sum, we see that the Gini index is dot thirty-nine. So in a number this cipher will um, uh, um, can can take between zero with this no inequality at all or one with this all the money is just behaved with the last person, the richest person. Well, in this case, this is a quite um, inequal number.